All right, so today is Saturday, November 23rd, 2019. So I'm standing here at the mouth of the Humber River, and over there in the distance is the skyline of Toronto. I've got my linear limo recumbent bike here, which has my action camera mounted on the front. And in this video, I'm gonna be riding on the waterfront trail heading in the west direction into the city of Mississauga. All right, so here we go. This is my first time making one of these videos in a while. Essentially, the format of this video is that I have a camera mounted on the front of my bike, and this video will be shot in real time, so you'll get to see the entirety of the waterfront trail. And as I'm riding, I've got a earpiece microphone in my ear, and I'll be narrating and describing the things which are around me. So this part of the waterfront trail just coming up here was recently refinished or remade. I guess it used to be a lot narrower than this and they've they've widened it and they've added a separate part for for slower moving trail users like walkers and people with dogs and strollers and things and then this part where I'm on right now over on the right side is uh, for faster moving people or vehicles, uh, people riding bikes and I suppose people are maybe rollerblading or maybe runners too. I don't think there's any actual rules about, you know, restricting people from walking on the part that I'm on, but I think people get the idea and they would rather, you know, go in the slower area. So this area that I'm riding through right here, it's part of the former municipality of Mimico, which is eventually amalgamated into part of Etobicoke, which is a borough of Toronto, and then Toronto was amalgamated with its suburbs or its boroughs. So this is now part of the city of Toronto. But this area has seen a lot of growth in the last 10 years or so. There's an awful lot of condo buildings that all sprang up here in the last few years. And this nice, uh, nice newly paved trail is really nice for riding on. For a good part of the summer, or at least the second half of the summer, actually no, probably most of the summer, this uh, trail, as I said, was under construction and uh, that meant that you had to ride on the road that was over there to the right of where I'm riding now. And it's a fairly, fairly quiet neighborhood road, but a separated multi-use trail is certainly preferable. I apologize if there's a lot of wind noise here. It's, I've got a wind sock on the, on the microphone, but it's not 100% effective, unfortunately. The park that I'm passing over on the left, I believe is called Humber Bay Park. Or Humber Bay Shores. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the place where that big arch bridge is, that's crossing over the Humber River, which is one of Toronto's main rivers. It actually was the border between the former uh, city of Toronto and Etobicoke, but as I said, there was amalgamation back in the late 90s, so there's no longer a distinction between the two areas. So I made a video showing the waterfront trail. Actually, I made, I made a bunch of videos showing the Lake Ontario waterfront trail. But namely, uh, two years ago, back in 2017, I made 
video showing the the central Toronto part of the waterfront trail. And in, in this video, I started. Um, well, I made. I mean, I, I mean, there was there was actually two of those videos. The first one started out in the beaches at the east end of well, a part of East York. And from there I rode to the center of Toronto at Young Street. And then I made a separate video, which was my Waterfront Trail West video, where I picked up things from that spot on Young Street, and I rode to the edge of where the Waterfront Trail goes, including the section that I'm riding right now. However, that trail kind of used to dead end, but since then, they added a, a key connector part in the middle, a sort of a, a junction, or not a junction, but a, a jumper, I guess you might call it, uh, which allowed you to get from that part of the trail to other parts of the trail, which were pretty good for riding on. And as a result, cyclists are now able to ride a lot further without having to ride on busy streets to be able to get there. So basically the whole, whole point of this video is to show you what would happen if you were to continue riding uh, from where that last video uh, left off. Now that that connection has been added on Lakeshore Boulevard, which we'll be seeing quite soon. The temperature right now is about one degree Celsius the last time I checked, but the sun is shining on me and it's quite warm actually. I wore lots of warm clothes in preparation for it being pretty cold, because usually it's quite a bit colder down near the waterfront, but there's no hardly any clouds in the sky and that sun is shining on me and it's really quite nice for riding. And another advantage of riding in these colder weather temperatures that I'm getting to enjoy right now is that this trail is so much less busy than it would be if I came here in the summer. The Waterfront Trail is, very po is a very popular place to come cycling and walking and running and rollerblading and every activity you may think of and in the summer this is a very can be a very congested trail which you know makes it a little bit more challenging for riding on so i enjoy riding here in the colder months all right so coming up here this trail ends on a residential street And this is where my, my last video ended. So I wrote to the end of the street and I said, well, this is the end of the video, but in the future they're gonna extend this. And the future is now, they've now extended that section of the trail and we're gonna go and see it. So yeah, the street coming up straight ahead of us is Lakeshore Boulevard, which is a fairly major arterial and was never very much fun or very safe for riding on, which is, you know, a stark contrast from the waterfront trail. So here at Norris Crescent, I'm gonna turn left onto this newly added bi-directional bike lane which is much more consistently in line with the waterfront trail that I was just riding on. So yeah, Norris Crescent is the name of that street that I turned off of and now I'm on Lakeshore Boulevard, continuing to ride west towards Mississauga. 
And this is all part of the Great Lakes Waterfront Trail, which in Toronto, the Waterfront Trail is known by the name uh, the Martin Goodman Trail. Or at least the downtown section is. I think this part is still called Martin Goodman too. I do apologize if the camera is a little bit shaky at times. I keep my camera rigidly mounted to the frame of my bike. It does have built-in Im image stabilization, which does a pretty good job at cutting back on some of the vibration, but when there's a big bump that I hit, I feel that bump and so do you as the viewer. So this is probably the longest bi-directional bike lane that's in the city of Toronto. There's a lot of North American cities that have this kind of infrastructure, but Toronto generally has unidire unidirectional bike lanes where they put one on either side of the road but they decided to put a bi-directional one here instead. I'm guessing because it kind of makes sense because of the waterfront trail. Most people are just going kind of straight through along here. They're not really, you know, turning onto any of these side roads. They're usually just going straight through and they're already on the, you know, the south side of the street. So, you know, it, it uh, reduces the, the need for someone to cross to the other side of the street to get through. The street that we're about to cross here is called Royal York Road, which is a major arterial actually. It goes all the way through on through uh, North York, or sorry, through uh, Etobicoke, or at least the majority of Etobicoke. As you're riding along, notice that the concrete barriers which separate the bike lane from the rest of the road, they've been painted. And uh, earlier this summer, I came biking on the waterfront trail one weekend. And uh, the bike lane that I'm riding in right now was, was kind of closed, or at least one side of it was closed. And that's because they had the the artists were here uh, doing their artwork and painting those. So those paintings are quite fresh. All right, so we're just reaching the end of this bi-directional bike lane and I'm gonna make a left turn up here at First Street. And from there, for a while, I'm gonna be riding on quiet neighborhood streets. So the, the bike lane ends here and we turn left onto 1st Street. And this part of the city is known as New Toronto. And with a name like that, you might think it was newly added to Toronto, but it's actually, this uh, area was first developed in the late 1800s. But I guess when it was first developed, it was a new place. All right, so we're gonna turn left here. So, so New Toronto is, to me, it's most notable for having its numbered streets. All the streets going, uh, all the north-south facing streets have numbered names, first, second, third, fourth, etc., and those go up into the I'm not sure how far they go, but 
they actually extend beyond where the former border of New Toronto is into the next former municipality, which we'll be riding through as well, which is called Long Branch. All right, so joining back onto the, to the road here. So unlike the downtown portion of the waterfront trail or the waterfront, or even the part that I was riding up until, you know, we got to Lakeshore, this part of Toronto, the majority of the, the Lakeshore is privately owned. There's houses and other sorts of businesses, I suppose, that occupy the, the waterfront. And because of that, the closest you can ride to the waterfront is on this road here. So not quite as scenic, but I suppose it's a little bit of a break from the wind. Again, it might sound like it's quite windy, but it's actually not that windy. The camera just seems to be pretty, not the camera, the microphone seems to pick up wind pretty, it's pretty sensitive to wind. Here's a section where you can see the waterfront again. And there's just a pretty steady wind coming from the west today, so I'm riding right into it right now. I'll look forward to having that wind behind me when I eventually make my turnaround and start riding home after I'm finished filming this video. So, so far I've ridden about six kilometers, or about five and a half, I suppose. We just passed 7th Street, so still making our way through New Toronto. So it's been a while since I've made one of these narrated cycling video type of videos. And there's a number of reasons why. I mean, I've been focusing on other projects. I spent a lot of the summer mostly focused on making bike touring videos, which I did a number of tours this summer and of course really enjoyed those and enjoyed sharing those with my YouTube audience. And those videos are very, well, I do my best to, to condense them down and make them, you know, as watchable as possible, <laughs> given that, you know, in, in a day I'm riding for, you know, six, seven hours or something like that each day, and I try and capture the highlights, but also try and make it so you, you get to see a little bit of everything that I saw. And, you know, being able to do that takes takes some doing. But another reason why I haven't been filming with this camera is because the mount that I built for it, the, the thing that holds it onto the bike, which I showed at the very beginning of this video, uh, that's something that I designed and 3D printed myself using the 3D printer at my local library. And unfortunately, the last time I was using this, I was installing it onto my bike and I over tightened one of the bolts which holds it in place. And that actually caused a crack to form in the plastic piece that I made, which again, is, I guess it's my fault because I designed the part and I was the one that over tightened it. So I needed to uh, correct that issue with it. So here I'm now uh, riding, st starting to enter a park. I believe this is all part of Colonel Sam Smith Park. And uh, north of this park is the campus for Humber College, or at least their, their Lakeshore campus. 
area over on the right you can see some red brick buildings. Those are part of Humber College. And those people were letting their dogs run wild on the trail, which is illegal in Toronto. You can't have your dogs off leash on a public trail like that or in any kind of park unless it's a designated uh, you know a dog dog park that's fenced in um, so yeah Sir Colonel Sam Smith Park we're riding through here and I'm actually gonna detour a little bit off of the waterfront trail to show you the skating loop that they have here at Colonel Sam Smith Park which I believe should now be should now be open which will be interesting to see so yeah the trail will continue over to the left but I'm just gonna branch off here to the right so we can see the skating loop which actually is not yet open <laughs> so the skating loop yes we'll, we'll ride on it here this is a refrigerated pad of concrete which in the winter they turn on the refrigeration and they pour water on it and you're able to skate on this and so it's kind of like a skating rink but, but it's actually sort of more like a trail so you you know you would ride around on this and it's a little bit more interesting than riding you know just going in circles on a you know a regular um, pad of ice like you'd see at a regular skating rink Toronto actually has a number of these skating loops or skating trails. I can't remember what they call them. There's one that was recently built in uh, the downtown core, which is called the Bentway. It's actually underneath the Gardner Expressway Highway near uh, Fort York. And there's another one that I've, I've skated on that one, I've skated on this one, and there's another one in the East End as well that I've skated on. I think it's in Woodbine Park, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I actually came here last November and, uh, and skated there and it was, I, I believe that's the longest one of the three that I mentioned. And uh, given that it's kind of far from the, you know, it's in a less populated area, um, I think it's less, less busy, which makes it really nice for skating. Uh, at least if you're someone that likes to skate fast and, <laughs> do that sort of thing. The Bentway is notorious for being, you know, a very busy place for skating. Uh, it's quite new, it only opened in uh, 2017, the winter, well, the winter of 2017 it may have opened in, uh, actually maybe 2018, I, I can't remember, it, it's quite new though. So yeah, up ahead we can see more of the skyline where we'll be riding towards. I'll just sort of point the camera over there so you can see. Of course, it's gonna be really small for the wide angle lens on the camera, but you can see that the waterfront, of course, continues there. And as we're almost out of Colonel Sam Smith Park, we'll now be riding back on the road again. And this is also uh, where we're gonna be crossing from what used to be part of uh, New Toronto into the next former municipality, which is called Long Branch. I'll just make a left turn here. So yeah, I really do want to start making more of the, more videos like this one that I'm doing where it's, it's a narrated cycling video. Because those videos, these videos are fun to make and I think people enjoy seeing them. I, I often get comments on them from people that say that they like to, in the, in the colder months like we have right now, they're not as big a fan of riding outside. So they take their bike inside and they put it on a trainer 
And as they're riding, they like to watch, you know, watch things on TV or movies or whatever. Or, but some people say that they like to watch these, you know, per first person cycling videos because it's kind of like what they're doing and it's almost like they're, you know, they're riding along there with me outside. So that's one motivation to make these videos. Although I'm a little bit uh, fighting against the weather right now. City's picking up some leaves and putting them into a, a truck. I can see over on the right, the uh, asphalt is kind of brown and wet. And I think that was all probably filled with leaves from these big city trees. And uh, with uh, those leaves there, there's some concern that when it rains, the water will back up and not make its way into the the storm sewer and I guess that can cause some some damage to the land around it when the you know water inevitably overflows now I believe the waterfront trail technically would normally go over to the left and we'd be riding on a, a trail which goes along that park which is over to our left but uh, it looks like they might be repaving it because the entrance way to it was looking kind of gravelly and there was a sign, which I didn't stop to read. And uh, I actually never really liked that part of the trail too much because there's a section on there where there's, well there was, actually it looks like there's new pavement down there now, but there used to be a section on there where uh, there was some, some tree roots which had grown and expanded underneath the asphalt and it made a very, very bumpy section of the trail. Like it was, I found it kind of dangerous because there was one time when I was riding along there and it was dark and I, I had lights on my helmet and my bike and everything. So I was able to see, but not as well as I was able to see during the summer months and I'm riding along and riding along and all of a sudden I, I, I hit a big bump which is one of those tree roots and uh, you know almost lost control of my bike it just you know was a very sudden bump that I wasn't expecting so that's kind of <laughs> soured me a little bit from riding on that uh, that section of the trail but it looks like, yeah, it looks like they might be, have repaved it or are still in the process of repaving it. So that will be a, a positive change there. This, ro lake, uh, this road here is called Lake Promenade. And I believe it's still part of um, Long Branch, or the former municipality of Long Branch. Which of course was, as I mentioned earlier, part of the borough of North York, or sorry, the borough of Etobicoke. If you're looking up Etobicoke, the spelling is a little bit different than you might expect if you're not from this area. Etobicoke, the last two letters of the word Etobicoke are K-E, so it's actually spelled like Etobicoke. But uh, that's not the correct way to pronounce it, obviously. So in Long Branch, the, uh, the streets are also numbered. We just went past, I think it was 29th or 23rd or something. Let's take a look at the next one here. 40th Street, so yeah, that was 3940. And I read online that actually that the, the numbered streets were based off of uh, New Toronto. They, they copied that when they were naming the streets uh, over here in Long Branch. And in fact, I think they actually may have renamed some of their streets. So we're just gonna enter a park here called Mary Curtis Park. And this will actually take us 
to the very edge of the city of Toronto, where we'll then be entering the suburb outside of Toronto, which is called Mississauga. Mary Curtis uh, was a famous scientist who was the first woman to ever win a Nobel Prize. And as far as I know, I don't think he had any direct relation with the city of Toronto. But Toronto has a... Sometimes we'll name some of their parks and things after famous people that actually have nothing to do with Toronto. There's a park pretty close to me uh, in my neighborhood called uh, Gene Sebelius. Uh, Gene Sebelius Square Park. And Gene Sebelius was a, I might even be mispronouncing that name, but he was a, a famous composer, I believe, from, from Hungary. And uh, whenever I heard his name, I thought, oh yeah, he's that guy that's, that's from uh, the Annex in Toronto. Because <laughs> I just knew his name. And you know, there's another park in my neighborhood, or a, just a, a very tiny little park, which is called... Uh, uh, Gwen Gwendolyn McEwen, who was a poet, who actually is from Toronto, but uh, anyway, Gene Sebelius, as far as I know, had nothing to do with Toronto. He was, they just named the park after him. So that uh, little creek that I just passed there, that is the border between Toronto and Mississauga, or at least it is for most of most of the length of that creek, but for whatever reason, where I am right now is actually still part of the city of Toronto, and Mississauga doesn't start for another 100 meters or so. I'm sure we'll see a sign, or we'll see some indication that we've crossed the border. I believe the colorful striped in the middle of the road is a Toronto thing and uh, right here in this forest that colorful stripe disappears and the, 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 the signs change a little bit and this now says waterfront trail and this is now we're in the in, in the city of Mississauga when I was riding through this forest earlier this year I uh, saw a deer running around in this, in these trees, which I wasn't expecting because this is not a particularly big um, forest by any means. It's quite small. I'm not sure what these wooden structures over on the left are. But I do know that the reason that we're heading away from the lake and going north now is because there's a uh, wastewater treatment plant for the city of Mississauga, which is, you know, that occupies a big section of the waterfront down where we just were. Actually, I think I could smell a little bit of that wastewater treatment plant as I was rounding the corner with that west wind passing over it and heading towards me. So yeah, you can see there's lots of leaves on the, on the ground. Most of the leaves have now fallen. Of course, in, in Toronto we have some very beautiful fall colors where, uh, you know, the leaves all change to orange and yellow and red and very beautiful colors and then they fall down and the trees spend the winter with no no leaves on them and and then of course the snow comes and actually we got snow in Toronto quite earlier this quite early this year at least for us I think it was about two weeks ago uh, it snowed and the snow landed 
uh, on the ground, it actually stayed. Whereas I'm more accustomed to when it snows during the, you know, the early season, like November, I'm accustomed to that snow hitting the ground and the ground is still too warm and the snow just turned into water. Or if it does land, it usually only lasts for about a day or so and then, you know, we have a sunny day like today and it all melts away, but this November was different. It actually snowed, uh, you know, on a Monday and it snowed for most of the day and the next day was cold and cloudy and, and it actually snowed a little bit more in the coming days and the snow actually stayed for about a full week. But uh, then this past week it had been quite a bit warmer and uh, it actually rained quite a bit yesterday. So uh, no more snow for us until a little bit later in the season. on a number of little projects in my free time lately. Projects with you know don't really involve making videos so my YouTube audience is not aware of them. Um, I've been working on my old Iowa linear bike which I uh, bought back in 2017 and haven't really been riding much in the last two years. And that's because there was a crack in the frame, which, uh, you know, rendered it unsafe to ride, but I've been, so basically I've just had that bike sort of sitting in storage and, you know, all the parts for it just sitting around. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to get that bike back on the road. So I've invested some time this past fall, or this fall currently, uh, working on repairing that issue and also upgrading a few things and I won't say too much about it because I am planning on making some videos about that bike and I'll save it for then. So yeah we're now we're around where that water treatment plant was and we've also we're also passing what was once a power plant that's over to the over on our left, of course it's not there anymore, it's just a big empty site which used to hold a power plant and actually was a, a very, um, very large power plant. It was a coal-fired power, power plant that was built back in the 50s or 60s and, uh, you know, it generated power for, you know, most of the second half of the 1900s, like from, from then until, well, they tore it down in the early 2000s in 2005 or something but I suppose they stopped using it um, a little bit earlier than that and yeah I believe they've actually I'm sure they've decommissioned all of their coal-fired power plants in of our pro in our province of Ontario Yeah, today's a really nice day to be out riding. It's, you know, as I said, right around, right around freezing, right around zero, one degree Celsius, or something like that. And I have a video that I posted a couple of years ago, which has been getting some some comments on it lately, which are, which is about uh, my recommendations for what to wear if you're going to be riding in. Uh, you know, colder temperatures. I think it's called Complete Guide to Winter Cycling dash uh, clothing. I have another one about my recommendations for, you know, actual bikes 
that I recommend or how to sort of equip your bike for riding in the winter. But uh, yeah, anyways, in the, in the clothing video I set, set out, you know, for every given temperature what exactly I would wear. And uh, I still stand by all the stuff that I said in that video. I've, I've still got most of the clothing that I showed in that video and I still use it primarily. Uh, I no longer uh, have a commute to do every day by bike to, to get to work. I actually work from a home office the majority of the time. Oh, just waiting for that car to cross, but he was waiting for me to cross. So yeah, given that I don't have a daily commute to do anymore, um, I don't have as many opportunities to ride my bike in the winter, but I still do ride it. I mean, my bike is still my primary vehicle. I still use it for doing, you know, the majority of my errands and going places and, and doing things. And uh, I still refer back to that guide that I said, it's kind of more important now that I'm not doing it on a daily basis to, uh, you know, be able to go back and say, oh, yeah, what was I supposed to wear when it was this temperature again? <laughs> so this park that I'm riding through here is called uh, Lakeshore, Lakeshore Promenade, Promenade Park, which again is in the city of Mississauga. Mississauga is uh, Canada's sixth largest city by population. But it's also part of the the uh, metropolitan area of the city of Toronto or, or uh, the greater Toronto area as it, it's often called. But it is quite an industrious city. It has you know a lot of companies have their a lot of Canadian companies have headquarters or big uh, offices here. A lot of industry too. There's a lot of trucking you know, depots and things that are in Mississauga. Mississauga is part of Peel region. And uh, right now I'm heading out onto a peninsula, which is again, part of this park. If I were to want to continue riding uh, along the waterfront, I would have kind of headed more to the right back there, as opposed to coming out onto this dead end peninsula. But this is a good place to, to, uh, to turn around because uh, I've now ridden uh, almost 14 kilometers since I started riding, since I started recording the video, and even further than that since I left home. Generally, if I'm to ride all the way to this, all the way to this point and back, uh, my distance for the day is uh, usually about 50 kilometers. So that's usually a good round number if you're, you know, wanting to do a ride on trails like this. Of course, we're more now exposed to the wind, so you'll hear lots of wind noises here. So I'm just gonna ride through this parking lot and then get onto this trail here, and I'll loop back. But uh, straight ahead, right here, you can see the waterfront trail as it would continue heading in the, the west direction. And after this point, it doesn't really get any better. Actually, I can't really say that because I haven't, I haven't actually ridden it myself, but there's no more trails beyond here. It, it's just, um, I guess it's somewhat similar to the Etobicoke waterfront where you've got, you know, residential streets for riding on and occasionally you go through a park which has a trail. But uh, yeah, Lakeshore Promenade Park is a really nice place to come and ride. And over there in the distance, just you can just stop here and get out my second camera so you can see the, the skyline of Toronto a little bit better. So that concludes my video showing you a ride of the western waterfront of Toronto, including riding into the city of Mississauga. I hope you enjoyed following along. If you watched all the way to the end of the video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.